Hi everyone, welcome to His Arrows Are Hands. If we haven't met before, my name is Celeste and I am the homeschooling mom of three boys. Our family is just about to start our fifth year of homeschooling. This year we will have a ninth grader, a seventh grader, and a fifth grader. I've already shared our curriculum choices for our oldest son, our ninth grader. I'll be sure to link the video up in a card. But in this video, I'm gonna be sharing our curriculum choices for our second son, our seventh grader. Okay, so here is the curriculum for our seventh grader. This is all that he will be using for this current school year. For math, he is going to be continuing with the Saxon Algebra 1 half. Um, we started this last year, but about halfway through the year. So he's gotten through about halfway through the course. And so he is going to be finishing that off for the second half of the year. We decided to hold off for the first half of the year last year because he wanted to do some of the work that was in the very back of his Horizons Level 6 book, some consumer math they had. So we took some time to go through those topics. And then about halfway through the year, he started on this Algebra 1 half. And so he's going to be finishing that off. I've already done a video detailing a look inside this Algebra 1 half course. So I'll be sure to link that video in case you are interested. We do pair it with the Nicole the Math Lady teaching videos. My husband actually oversees the upper level math. He starts teaching the boys math starting at this Algebra 1 half level. Um, but since he does work full time, what my son will do is that he watches the Nicole the Math Lady video. And what he does is he goes in, completes the lesson, um, and then when my husband is done with his work in the afternoon, he's able to review and just make sure that everything was good. And if he has any questions, he can take the time and reviews that with him. Because it's only gonna take him to about halfway through the school year, we are going to then be continuing with this Kumon workbook. There are various Kumon workbooks. I'm actually, I'll put a picture so you can see the different ones that they offer. Um, but we asked him which he would like to do algebra or geometry, and he loves geometry, so he chose geometry. So here's a quick look inside. It's just a workbook. We'll be continuing, as I said, with this for this year, and then we'll be finishing off the year with this Kumon workbook. For grammar and composition, our son is going to be using the Abeka Grammar and Composition Work Text 1. This is something that we've already used. We used it with our oldest son when he was in seventh grade. It worked well. It also comes with a spelling and vocabulary book. We like to use these word lists and we kind of incorporate and do our own activities to practice them. I actually did a video talking about different spelling activities that we like to do. I'll be sure to link that video in case you're looking for some ideas for spelling activities. And one thing that I have mentioned in our How We use a Becca video is that the years that we use a Becca, we like to supplement with composition because I feel that a Becca strength is their grammar. It really does have that solid grammar, which is wonderful for a basis um, for their composition. There are composition units, but I don't feel it does as much as far as teaching of how to write. So on the years that we use a Becca, I do like to supplement with something else for writing composition. This year we are going to be using this writing learning station book I found. I actually found this in a local bookstore. It was just a couple bucks. It wasn't a clearance. It was wonderful um, to find. I'll see if I can find it online. If I'm able to, I'll be sure to link it down below. But it's something that I'm going to be doing weekly with him. It has teacher pages and different composition lessons and themes that we'll be able to work with and kind of do kind of a writer's workshop every single week. So that's what I'll be using for composition for him, in addition to the Grammar and Comp by Abeka. For literature, we are going to be doing a few different things. So we're actually going to have a rotating schedule. Later on, I'll be sharing kind of what a week in literature looks like for our seventh grader. It's going to include different things such as assigned reading books that we'll have. We'll also have free read and also we'll be using these two books. The first is the Of People literature book by Abeka. We used this with our oldest son when he was in seventh grade. The things that we liked about it, different types of literature that was sampled within this. So you have plays, you have poetry, you have excerpts from books. So um, there, it is really great in that way. They also have comprehension questions that you can talk and discuss. So um, I did like it. What I didn't like as much were the tests and things like that. So we're not going to be using that portion this year with him. Instead, I'm going to take this and we're going to do this once a week. So what I did is I shared with him the different 
topics of the different units that there are. And he chose the ones that seemed a little more interesting to him. And so we're going to be focusing in on these specific units, reading through these different literature pieces together, discussing them, and we'll be doing that once a week. That'll be how we are using this literature book. In addition to that once a week read together literature discussion, we're also going to have a weekly literature lesson and it's going to be using this book. This is also another one that I was able to find in that local bookstore that I mentioned. Again, it only cost us a couple bucks. It was a great find. Again, if I'm able to, I'll be sure to link it below, but it has different literature lessons teaching about the different types of literature it has worksheets so we're going to be taking this once a week talking about um plot reviewing types of literature different things so it looks pretty interesting i think it'll be fun again nothing too intense but i think he will learn a lot as far as the different types of literature the different components of literature so i think we'll have a lot of fun with this and again we are going to be doing this once a week for literature there are going to be several subjects that we are going to do as joint subjects with our seventh grader and our fifth grader. Um, and also I mentioned in our ninth graders curriculum choices that we also are going to be bringing in our ninth grader for some of these as well. So this mystery of history course is an example of that. So this is something that we have always enjoyed. So far we've done volume one and then we skipped through and we did volume four. But last year we took a break to be able to do some U.S. civics. This year we wanted to go back to be able to to do volume two, which we have not done for the mystery of history. So this is the newly updated, the second edition, volume two, hardcover. It looks super interesting. We're very excited to be able to use it. We're we'll reading this as part of our morning meeting. I shared a video talking about how we kind of set up our morning meeting. So I'll be sure to link that video in case you're interested to see what we do within our morning meeting. We will make a few tweaks maybe to that in this year, since we also do have our ninth grader and our boys are getting a little older. But uh, what I will do is I will read through this lesson with all three boys during our morning meeting. And then our seventh grader and our fifth grader will be completing the assignments. So our ninth grader is not gonna complete assignments for this because he has his own social studies as I shared, but um, he will be joining us for the discussions and read aloud portion of the lesson. Mystery of History, Volume 2, The Early Church and the Middle Ages is what we will be doing for history. It also includes geography and we'll also be using the timeline figures that correlate with this. Um, once we've used it for a few weeks, I'll try to do a review to show a look inside and show how we are setting everything up to be able to use this course with our seventh grader and our fifth grader. For science, we are going to be doing a couple different things for our seventh grader. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to be using the Christian Kids Explore Creation Science for the first half of the year. Last year, we used this um, Christian Kids Explore Science for Earth and Space Science. I showed a look inside that curriculum, so I'll be sure to link that video. We used it with our younger two sons last year, which were sixth and fourth grade, and the boys really enjoyed it. Um, so much so that they requested if we could do another study by them. And specifically, they wanted to do the creation science. We should do a flip through um, and a review of the curriculum of once we've used it for a while. Because the course isn't as in depth, I wanted to also be able to use this for the first half of the year and then use something else for the second. And what we are going to do is we are going to be using the easy peasy all-in-one homeschools zoology course. I think it's going to correlate so nicely with the creation science. So this is a free online course that you're able to just do right on your computer or tablet and work through it together. We are not going to do the entire course since this is a design to be a full year course, but we took the first portion of the course and these are just principles um, that go with the course. We also would like to add more to this. I think it's a perfect year to be able to do a field trip to the zoo and also do some hands-on projects about different animals, classifications, animal families. I think it's gonna be a really fun year for science um, for the two boys. So we're looking forward to doing that with them. For Bible this year, we are going to be doing a verse-by-verse -verse study of First Kings, Second Kings, and Romans. We always enjoy to do a Old Testament study Monday through Thursday, and then on Friday, it's our New Testament study. For our son's electives this year, he is going to be doing one of the computer courses 
on Easy Peasy All-in-One Homeschool. Once a week, we'll also have a specials block where we'll rotate between art and Spanish. I made a video talking about how we do art in our homeschool, so I'll be sure to link that video in case you'd like more information about that. Okay, so those are our curriculum choices for our second son, our seventh grader. In the next few days, I will also be sharing our curriculum choices for our third youngest son, which is our fifth grader. I was thinking that when we started homeschooling, our oldest son was in fifth grade, and it's amazing to think that our youngest son is now the same age that his older brother was when we started started this journey. I am truly flies. It truly is amazing and it's such a blessing and gift to be able to be homeschooling our children. I pray that all of your planning and prep is going well. I pray that you and your family are well. I pray you are blessed. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you soon.